All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Rishi Jahari. I'm uh, one of the product managers here at Oracle. Um, I have responsibility towards uh, the Oracle Kubernetes engine, uh, also known as OKE. And for those that don't know what OKE is, it's essentially our CNCF uh, conform uh, managed Kubernetes service for your container workloads, right? So it um, has a tight integration into Oracle Cloud Infrastructure uh, services as well. So today we're going to quickly talk about deploying these OKE clusters um, as infrastructure as code with an example using Terraform. So one thing I wanted to start off by talking about is some of the tools uh, that we have to our, um, in our toolkit, I guess, to, to deploy these um, clusters in um, OCI. So one, one tool is Ansible. Uh, many people here may be familiar with Ansible. Um, as we know, it's uh, primarily used for configuration management, but we know that a lot of customers of ours have um, a lot of playbooks set up and you know are using it extensively through their multi-cloud uh, environment. So we, we have a lot of uh, playbooks for cluster deployments as well, uh, utilizing Ansible. Uh, Terraform, and then we have some, I have some links here uh, just, you know, for uh, where the playbooks are located. Uh, Terraform, um, as you know, that's where our example is going to be about, is our infrastructure or orchestration tool. Um, and here um, we have our Terraform provider documentation, uh, and then the sample GitHub script that we're going to kind of walk through here in a moment. Um, and then also, one of the services that was uh, recently released is our OCI uh, resource manager, which is our uh, Terraform as a service, as you can say. So actually, it's you know Terraform with console view. So you actually, you know, for users that maybe are not wanting to go in the command line, you can actually deploy stacks in a UI uh, interface. Um, so some of the advantages with Terraform, which is what our example is going to be about, is it primarily focused on orchestration and not configuration management, as many of you may know. Um, so it, it really it does well with managing your, your infrastructure, networks, storage, things like that in the cloud. Um, it's a huge advantage um, using Terraform. And you're not, when, you, when you talk about immutable infrastructure, uh, Terraform plays really well with that. Uh, Multi-provider, um, it's real powerful with being, you know, as we're talking about the theme this week being, you know, having a uh, um, cloud agnostic approach or on-prem. Uh, Terraform works really well in multiple providers. Um, and then immutable infrastructure, right? So, uh, you know, the thought is that you want to deploy servers and destroy servers and not, um, you know, manage servers uh, over time with software patching and things like that to avoid like configuration drift, you know, where over time there could be undetectable changes with run, long running servers. Um, syntax, it's has its own custom language, right? And it's, you know, considered to be very human readable and machine friendly. And next one, dry runs Terraform plan. For those that haven't worked with Terraform, it's very good at uh, describing what, um, what infrastructure it's gonna actually deploy but without actually doing it, right? So you could be set to run multiple compute instances, load balancers, network resources, and know exactly what it's gonna do before you commit and let it let it orchestrate all those resources. Um, and there's actually use cases where people, uh, customers actually set scripts and monitors around Terraform plan and alert on any drift or deltas from what the state should be in their environment. Um, client only, so it works really well with all the cloud provider APIs. No agents, no servers in your environment, uh, so no footprint. Um, it's portable and flexible, right? So it's one tool that you can use moving forward, one language, and actually works really well with configuration management tools such as Ansible, so um, really powerful. Now the example um, we have is a recently published Oracle Kubernetes Engine Terraform script that we um, are now are you know building our community around um, it? It's uh, it uses a lot of reusable Terraform modules. So within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, um, you know, there's we built a network module in there where it, not only if you're using it for a Kubernetes engine, you could be using it for um, other purposes. Like you need to develop, uh, create a virtual cloud network for uh, 
your compute instances beyond just Oracle Kubernetes engine. You can reuse the same module. Uh, you can build on top of it. We have a Kubernetes add-on module, uh, which obviously will grow over time with more add-ons. You know, we're talking about adding, right now we have like Calico and Helm in there, but we want to maybe add Prometheus Operator. And this is something, you know, we're, we're looking to do moving forward. Um, the script is not only used for the managed Kubernetes service, but we have customers that have uh, Kubernetes clusters, they manage themselves, like a full Kubernetes cluster, and they use the data plane side of the script um, as well. So it's kind of multi-purpose in that way. And you know, one of the things we really want to do is encourage the community to contribute to this. Uh, talking to our solution architecture team, they're really um, motivated to grow, and we want um, more contributors. And I, I've talked to multiple people this week that have already taken the script, that are using Oracle Cloud Structure and OKE, and are enjoying and and looking forward to contribute to this as well. Um, so in the example that we have, um, this is a, a sample architecture of what it creates just within like 10 minutes. So if you, a couple of clicks, Terraform apply, and you can have a fully, uh, uh, a full OKE cluster set up. And here, as you'll see, you'll, it will create uh, a virtual cloud network uh, with an internet gateway attached. And it can also create Bastion host for you in the public subnet. So um, if you uh, later decide to have your worker nodes in private subnets, you have a, a jump box, a way to access uh, those worker nodes. Um, it also creates the public subnets for optional load balancers that you may later create as part of your Kubernetes cluster as a deployment. Um, and then you also um, have the worker nodes that will span three different ADs. And then for, for customers that uh, may be new to OCI, that's essentially the uh, different data centers within a region. So it's just harbor isolation, uh, just uh, physical differentiation uh, for like uh, high availability. So um, as you can see, there's there's no pools here uh, with worker nodes. And as I mentioned earlier, those can be in private subnets. So you can uh, completely um, uh, secure your, your applications without any public internet access. And then in that situation, you would use the bashing host to access that. So all this can be created uh, just within 10 minutes. And here's uh, the, the Terraform variables file. So I just want to make a, a couple of call outs here on some of the, the, uh, the interesting parts of it that you would use. Essentially, if you download this, you, you get clone it, you store it locally, these are the parts that you would just um, add your, uh, your, your data in or your, your uh, configuration in. And then you can just go ahead and deploy Terraform apply. So obviously, we'd have to connect to the OCI console. So if you uh, need your, you know, your uh, user data, I mean, your OSID, which is like your, your unique identifier for your user account, account information, a compartment. So you add that information in. Um, then you also have the ability to control the size of your subnets um, for your worker nodes, load balancers that you will create, as I mentioned in the previous slide. Um, it does a pretty good job of controlling the size and the CIDR block range so that you have the ability to not out, out, coming out of the gate, not having like overlapping IP address issues if you have this connecting to another application that's on premise. Um, you know, those type of things can be avoided early on. Yet you're not hard coding, you know, subnet side ranges directly to this file. So it's a good starting point with that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the Bastion hosts uh, can be created and it actually will install queue control, all of Kubernetes on there. Uh, so you can actually just log into that Bastion host and run all your queue control commands inside your VCN, so that you know kind of speeds up the access to your your private work nodes immediately, and um, you know you can manage high availability. So those availability domains you can actually place where the Bastion host, low bouncer subnets, worker subnets are placed. In, the, in my example, there's three um, um, availability domains, and here you can actually see the, the placement of them. Uh, one, two, three, uh, and that can be all configured based on your needs. And as I mentioned earlier, worker nodes, a simple flag if you want it in a private or public subnet. And some other configuration uh, call outs here, uh, your no pool shape. So, you know, with Oracle Cloud and OKE, we support bare metal shapes um, as well. So you can here choose a bare metal um, compute shape or you can go with the VM. And uh, we actually have a private registry that you can pull your, your container images from which is called Oracle Container Infrastructure Registry, OCIR. Um, so as part of your CI CD pipeline, you can uh, pull those images down and, and deploy them to your, your Kubernetes application. 
And this is the add-ons, right? So now this is something we want to grow in our community as we're all here learning more about cloud native technologies and what we can do. Um, we're certainly looking to expand this as well. Um, so I want to kind of touch quickly on Resource Manager, OCI. That was uh, uh, the Terraform as Service uh, uh, mention I did early on. That essentially is your UI console view, uh, console view of Terraform. Um, and just if you ever get into it, you want to use it, just some key callouts of what some of the names are. Uh, a stack represents a set of OCI resources. So essentially, from my example earlier, that's your, your collection of Terraform files. So that's known as a stack within the resource manager tool. A job represents an action on the stack. And then for Terraform users, that's simply apply and apply and destroy uh, our, our job you can take on the stack. So uh, these are just kind of the, the naming conventions used that kind of correlate to maybe some Terraform uh, users that are familiar with what, what the terms are. So, you know, this is kind of interesting. I mean, I've, I've dealt with the customers that want a console view of Terraform. Uh, maybe not necessarily for them, maybe for some other users that are just comfortable and want to know more about what's being deployed in the infrastructure, but not necessarily comfortable in the CLI um, or, you know, want to, um, yeah, say in CLI, but they want to have a graphical interface. That's just what they are used to and they can uh, easily um, uh, manage. And with that, that's uh, kind of the end here. And I just wanted to say, if you're interested in creating an OCI account, if you don't have one, uh, we have a lab. We have labs over there. And if you're interested in creating a cluster, we have an option. Uh, I have the Terraform script if you want to spin it up. Um, or we have some quick create options within the console as well. And um, we, we're here to answer questions. So um, feel free to come by and ask away. Uh, thank you.